Oh, what's up, YouTube? All right, so today we're back again talking more about Projectel. Today, I'll, I'm going to answer all the questions. We're going to go through some of the extra things that I did not know at the time, like how many characters this is going to be. All right, let's get into it. First off, we're going to start with questions from Twitter. How strong are meters slash other resources? So meter and other resources are very strong, uh, especially burst. So if you look at the game, so if you look at the game, this up here is burst. This one's super huge. Obviously, you get out of a combo. Then you also have the meters down here. It is worth noting that they don't share between characters, so you can't like farm them with one. And they then both meters also carry over to the next round. Now, there's a lot of different ways to spend your meter. Um, the universal ones are parry, which costs one meter, but it refunds you a meter if you like you're successful and you get a you know punish or you blow them back. Usually you do actually get a full punish and it doesn't scale that much unlike Street Fighter. So it's a very strong thing, but keep in mind that parry can, you have to do a high parry or a low parry and low parry does not cover projectiles. It only hits lows. So it's not free to parry at all. And you can obviously grab it as well. Outside of that, there's also push block. Push block is very good. Uh, you'll see the bunch in trailers. And then there's the supers. Supers are very different. Like some of them, like Echo, he has a install super where he creates after images. He has another super that he throws a projectile that he can combo after. Um, Ari, for example, has one uh, level one super where she just dives after them. And then another one where she does a pr projectile ball and then chases her. The interesting part about that one is that um, you, you're supposed to like, normally it just goes like a boomerang, like out and then in. But the best way to use it is actually to throw it out and then run away from it long enough. If you run away from it long enough, then it does like an explosion. So the, there's some really cool combos where you throw it out and then you like air dash over the opponent as the ball is coming. And so the ball goes like this and then explodes uh, and does way more damage than if you just like do it and then do nothing. Um, after that, you also have uh, level twos, which is uh, invincible generally, you know, they're full cinematic. Um, you generally can't do like level one into level two, uh, as far as I know, maybe with double down, you can do that. I actually did not test that. Um, but level twos are also a little bit character specific without mentioning too much, but yeah, overall meter is very important. Um, if you get caught on defense without meter, you will really feel that. And it's significantly hard to get out. Yeah, so one of the reasons why you have separate meters is exactly as you said, like it's so that your other teammate can't use it. You have uh, someone else using all their meter. Compared to all the other fighting games, what makes Project L more unique than others? Can Smash players also get into it as well? Absolutely, Smash players can get into it. I think it's gonna take a little bit initially, but there are no motion inputs, so it does feel a little bit like Smash in that way. What makes it different? Well, obviously the most unique thing is that two people can play on one side, right, for one team. Although that was a thing in Cross, Ta cross Tekken, uh, but it wasn't very popular. I would say the most unique thing, honestly, is that it's a very complex, very community first. Like it's for people that love fighting games, not people that like want to play fighting games for a week and then drop it. It's for the people that love it. It's super hype. It's very movement focused compared to most games. Um, and it's, you know, backed by such an enormous company with such a good IP. Um, I think that's honestly what makes it the most unique, that it's just really, really good. It's very likely, you know, knowing Riot and the people that developed it were the ones developing G GPO. So this is going to be the first fighting game with servers, which means that the most likely the netcode is just going to be incredible because if I have to play against someone on the West Coast, normally I have to send all my data all the way to West Coast, right? But theoretically now we could both play on a server on the East Coast and could both have like 80 ping to that server. Uh, so I think that those are the biggest things, but there's tons of small things that I think really add, you know, unique gameplay, like a team game with burst, with rounds is very unique and stuff like that. But I would say the biggest thing is definitely, you know, just the amount of support, where it's coming from, and obviously the 2v2 uh, game mode. 2v2 and 1v1 and 1v2. Given the League of Legends gigantic roster. Did the devs happen to give any hint as to how large they like the cast in Project L to be in comparison when all of a sudden not? Yeah, so the, so here you can see that there's 14 characters total. Uh, so I'm assuming 14 is the launching 
And I'm assuming they're also going to, you know, release more and more. It's going to be free to play. It's going to have characters coming out frequently, right? Uh, they didn't tell us, you know, how the format's going to work, how how many characters you're going to be able to play for free. It, all, all of them, none of them, you know. Um, as for characters, they did mention that they want some monsters in. It's not just going to be, you know, anime girls and guys. Um, and I definitely think they will do that. They will definitely have some funny characters. Um, and I think they're basically going to go with the obvious, right? Like popular characters, characters that have interactions with the roster already here, you know, so that they can have, uh, you know, voice lines, stuff like that, team ups that you want to see. And then, uh, obviously they're also going to go for characters that play in an interesting way. They're not going to have 15 assassins that all play the exact same way. Like, I think they'll go for really popular characters. Uh, and then once they've decided the popular characters, what I would do is then try to fill the gameplay gaps with characters that would make really good fighting game characters, but might not be as popular. So yeah, let me know in the comments who you would want to see. How does aerial movement feel? From what I've heard, it's character specific, but how do you feel like if your character doesn't have good air options, they may feel rough to play neutral. It gets to play in DNF duel and deal with full screen normals. So first off, the normals in this game are not full screen. Uh, there are some specials that will go very far, but it's not like DNF at all where you can't do that. There's air block, super jump, uh, dash jump, you know, character unique movement. So Echo has a dash. Uh, I don't think Darius has anything. So with Darius, you're less likely to like super jump, but something every character had uh, that I played was that they have moves that change how they move in the air, even if it's not a double jump or an air back dash like a special that stops you. Uh, Echo can, for example, throw his projectile and that stops him. He has the, you know, like cut down move, which stops him as well. Can bait anti with that. So air movement does feel good. Right now, anti are a little bit strong, but that's just, you know, like super alpha build. Uh, I would like to see a little bit more air movement, but it's definitely not, you know, feeling like anywhere close to DNF. Like it very much feels like the air movement of a team game. I guess this is the only two day event. There wasn't that much time to deeply lab combos. Uh, what were the rules for combos? Same move per ration high, not really. Uh, how many touches per kill per character? So generally it could depend. There were TOD combos that were found, but they were pretty, pretty special. And they obviously require your opponent not to have burst. Um, overall two to three good hits would be good, but there are plenty of situations where it's kind of hard to convert or you only get like one hit. Like, for example, grabs don't do that much damage. They're more for setup. Um, Ari's anti-air, for example, does not give a full combo. Obviously, some projectiles don't lead into full combo, stuff like that. So it's kind of variable. But I would say, in general, if you get normal hits, you can end them in two if you have a lot of meter. Three is more normal, especially if they have burst. Like, if they burst the first combo, then you get two, good, two more good combos. There is no clear limit, but there is... Wall bounce and ground bounce both work in a special way where I think they both share somewhat of the same thing. There's a special state where you kind of crumple into the corner and in mid screen, they will just slide. But if you hit the corner, then they will crumple. Uh, and you can set up really good okay from this because they just stand up. They get no stand up options from this. But if you just attack them, then you just combo them. Kind of like wall slump in Guilty Gear Strive. So very lenient for pickups in the corner. Um, if you do that one twice mid screen, uh, you get like a special like super wall bounce, which kind of just pushes them all the way to the corner. Uh, same thing with the ground bounce. Like you get like a special effect if you ground bounce them twice in a row. Um, instead of, you know, how in Marvel, they just kind of, if you ground bounce them after already having used up your ground bounce, they just kind of, you know, like instantly go on the ground. In this game, there's like a special like zoom in effect a little pause when you double wall bounce or double ground bounce someone uh and there are some special effects for example if you do the, the like wall slump thing twice you could actually steal the corner on the second one there is a there is a version here which we'll get to in the clips um so they like added this extra thing where like you're trying to sometimes do a double wall bounce so you get different Oki compared to just a regular knockdown and stuff like that. It was very variable and it felt very interesting because of that since you got so many different ways to combo. Like for Ari, it, you had different Oki if you did a regular knockdown, 
a double wall slump or wall bounce or a double ground bounce. And then you could also like push them out of the corner. So you have min screen Oki, if you'd prefer that, stuff like that. But yeah, I, I do think the damage has to be a little bit lower in general uh, than the craziest team games, but it shouldn't be too low since, yes, it is a 2v2 fighter, so you can't have 3v3, you know, TODs or one touch kills as often. But there is rounds in this game, so you really don't want it to be in a situation where every every single game, if it goes to, you know, th round three, it takes like 10 minutes. Overall, right now, the round time was very long compared to most fighting games. Like, best of three could take four to seven minutes sometimes. And that was generally when something went to time, but it did not feel like a super fast, like, a game in terms of how quickly the match went on. It was more fast in terms of how quickly you move and how quickly you make decisions. But you're not getting, you know, constantly one hit killed. Uh, how do you feel about the designs of the assist? Um, were they more useful starting your turn from neutral or were they better when you already had your advantage? So the assists are very interesting because you have two assists per character, normal, and then you have the charged one. It really, really depends. And I think this is one of the most interesting things if you come from other team games that the assist can kind of be used in any way. So Ari has a dash assist where she kind of goes, you know, like a lariat. And she has a cold star assist where, let me see if I can find this one. Yeah, here we go. So this is the cold star assist, right? And so Echo has one where he throws his projectile and another one where he dashes in. And because of the hand tag thing, you can kind of do both. There's some combos where your attack will knock them all the way full screen. So what you can do then is you can predict that that attack will hit and then call out your charge assist. The, the character will start running and then once the character comes close, like your assist character, then you will hand tag over to them. There's also situations where, uh, for example, with Ari, she has to ch recharge her orbs. So one cool thing that a dev showed me is that you can, with Ari on the screen, if you need to recharge orb, you can super jump up into the air, call an assist, and then charge the orbs. And then as soon as the assist, like the character comes out, you don't even need to have the attack come out. You can instantly tag to them you'll be instantly actionable and then Ari will be at the top of the screen recharging slowly drifting down and that leaves you space to defend both of your characters and get the recharges semi-safely obviously if you do get hit instantly then you're in a lot of trouble because she's eventually going to come down and you're going to get TOD'd or I mean sorry happy birthday combo but yeah I would say assist the uh, the way the assist works is that you can really use it very very freeform and in all the different ways that you just specified if it's very balanced so far, um, you would use your assist both in neutral and on get in. And, you know, it really felt very like player to player, which one they used more. I see a lot of people call calling the game BB tag with simple inputs. From the gameplay perspective, do you feel that way as well? If not, where's the game different similar to BB tag? I would personally say it's more like a Marvel game, like Marvel 3, but with some anime mechanics. That's what it felt more like to me, especially with how the characters their kits felt very like they felt very deep and obviously there is some part of that to uh bb tag as well but it really felt like you know every character moves different they have different uh, mobility the like echoes like time winder is like very very core to his design uh same thing with ari and her fox fires and stuff like that um, darius with this bleed and so on uh that it really felt reminiscent of marvel you know design and I know a lot of the people on the team are big Marvel fans as well. So it kind of felt like, like to me, it felt very much like Marvel 3 plus Guilty Gear. Like the character design leaning a little bit towards Guilty Gear um, and burst, obviously excess thing, stuff like that. And the way a meter is used is kind of a Guilty Gear where you have like one meter for a lot of things and then your burst meter. Whereas in um, Marvel 3, for example, you don't really use your meter for defense that much. Overall, though, I would say that it is similar to BB Tag. The biggest difference is that BB Tag, even though the mechanics on paper are very similar, BB Tag doesn't really play very similar because the normals in BB Tag and the special moves, they are like, they cover the entire screen. Like, you're very, very cramped in BB Tag. The backwards movement is not nearly as good in, in that or the, like, you know, aerial movement. So you're very, like, very much, like, just fighting very close, whereas in... In Project Alice, a lot more about movement and dashing away, uh, getting some straight hits. One of the biggest changes that they made sure not to be a mix-up, that battle for the grid and um, 
what's it called? BB tag both have, which is that what you can do in those games is that you basically sandwich your opponent. You start hitting them on block. You put the assist on the other side and then bam, you tag to them and then hit them from your assist or you stay with your main character and that by itself becomes a mix up. In this game, when you swap to your assist character, there's a freeze, uh, which is intentionally made long enough to where you're not gonna get mixed up just by teleporting and swapping character control, which I think is very good design. And it's a very bad way how BB tag and honestly power for the, uh, the Power Rangers game as well, bad for the grid. So I, I really like it. So generally it's like, you know, you could say that it's BB tag, but not Kusuge. But to me, it very much feels like it's not made to be that game. It's made to be like a Marvel inspired, taking a little bit from everything, taking, you know, mechanics from every new game uh, rather than a BB tag game. Do the LM, MH, LMH button combination do anything? So LM is dash. You can also bind that separately. So there's essentially a dash button. Uh, the way dashes work, uh, let me get into that real quick. Dashes are interesting because if you hold back and then press dash, 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 you will you will continuously wave dash. But the optimal way to do wave dashing is generally for both forward and backwards is to do dash and then down. So you crouch and then you dash again. Um, if you do dash block, so you do dash forward and then crouch block like down back you almost instantly stop. So think about how it looks like when you dash and then FD in a Guilty Gear game. You like stop like instantly. So you can't do the thing in Guilty Gear Strive and Dragon Ball, for example, where you're, da you're dashing forward and holding down back and your character just keeps running, but they're actually blocking uh, or they're sliding rather in, in Strive. So I think that's a very good thing. Uh, and it also allows for a lot of microspacing. Like you can dash a tiny, tiny bit uh, you can do fake outs. Like it really does feel like you can, you know, dash dance, just move really, really well. MH is throw. So you use that for both air throw and ground to throw. Um, I'm pretty sure you can tech while crouching as well. LMH was not a binding as far as I know, but L plus H is parry. Uh, and that also has a different shortcut. Which game do you think now is the best to learn this game. Take into account mix-ups, constantly SS space neutral. So uh, what game should you play if you're hyped by Prytel? Honestly, the biggest thing is play any fighting game. Uh, whichever one you like will transfer over. If it's a 2D fighting game, that's extra. Uh, like that that will help you more rather than playing, you know, Tekken. But even Tekken things transfer over for sure. Uh, I would say like out of the big games, I would say the Strive is the closest in terms of uh, like the general game pace, how mix-ups work kind of, especially if you play a more complicated character like, you know, Sado, Happy Chaos, Jacko, they have a little bit more meat in how they, you know, mix up things and how you do a lot of different things. But the problem with Strive is that it's not nearly as movement focused as some of the other games. So it would learn you to play offense and defense in that game, but it might not teach you the movement or assist. Assist and movement, I would definitely not play Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball has a very, very strict movement thing. And has a ton of like, you know, it has those full screen normals that Prytel does not have. Um, it doesn't, you know, backdashes are very risky. I would say, honestly, probably Skullgirls Battle for the Grid or Marvel 3, if you want to learn the ground movement. Um, but there isn't really one super one-to-one -one. street fighter. You know, it's just very like w very low in power level compared to these games. Like you're not having air dashes and stuff like that. So I wouldn't really recommend that as like the number one game. But on the other hand, I think street fighter six is just a great way to get into fighting games in general. So, you know, you're probably, if you do get into street fighter, you'll still learn a lot of things that will help you in practical and you'll have a lot of people to play with. So, yeah. Do you think 2v2 or 1v1 should be, will, should be tournament standard, or perhaps there will be from anyone can enter with any amount they want? So I think that at least in the beginning, people are going to be able to enter any way they want. They were, that's how the tournament we ran there ran. Um, and there doesn't really seem to be any problems with it. Right now, most people are agreed that 1v1 feels like it should be stronger. Um, there are tiny benefits to playing 2v2. But those are like, oh, 
you know, if you if you have a character and you do a move that needs a charge, for example, like you need to hold down a button, then you can tag out and then your you know, teammate can control the point character while your assist character still holds the charge. So when they get to go back in, they have the charge still. Or you can do a thing where if you do a super and with Ari Super, you can steer it like how it goes like this. Um, you can do super and then do another super, right? And if you do that normally with one, with one player on the team, you can't really control the, how the super goes as soon as you uh, swap the character. But since if you're two people on the same team, you can decide how that you know super goes and adjust it, which helps a little bit. Overall, I would still say that one v one player feels stronger, and they want to keep them you know kind of even if possible. But I think overall one v one will probably be the more popular mode. But I do think 2v2 is definitely nothing to scoff at. It's not like a gimmick mode that like only one or two people will play ever. I do think it was going to be a big part of the game. And I do think it's very, very fun. Do I think Cashless will enjoy it? I think Cashless will enjoy it, but it's not a game made for people that are super casual. Uh, Marvel 3 was fun, right? Because the, you just do 1, 2, 3, S, 1, 2, 3. Like you have that th same thing where you can just do a very basic combo like one two three launcher and then you super jump up and then you do one two three launcher or you can do really long combos um same thing with dragon ball right there still was that thing of like an easy combo it's still fun to do and i still think a lot of other people will have fun um what they're betting on though is not making the game super easy but making it enjoyable to learn so i talked to them and they were like yeah so hopefully we'll obviously do good tutorials and stuff like that but Hopefully, one of the main things that helps people get over that barrier is that when you're two people on one team, you can teach your friends. If me, a fighting in pro, ha have a friend, let's say one of my Smash friends wants to get into Project L, like, okay, teach me how to play. If we were to play a normal fighting game, the only options really is me sitting next to him, coaching him as he plays bad players, and that can be very annoying and very overwhelming as a new player, or very, very boring for me, right? Because I am not, I don't get to play any. Or we play against, against each other, and then if, if you play against someone else, then you're just going to shit on them if you're a good player. Or like super sandbag, in which case it probably won't be fun for him either. Like both people will have a bad time. The cool thing about Practile is that it really incentivizes that thing of like, you take your friend, you play with them, you can tag them in and out, you can give them real time coaching. And there's an incentive for you to coach, right? Because if you coach them, then you're going to do better uh, as a team as well. And I think it's going to be very good for a new player to have that thing of like, you play for a little bit, then you tag out, then you can watch your teammate who might know more about fighting games, do the thing, and then you swap back. Now he can tell you, try to do this thing. I'll call my assist there, you know, stuff like that. I really do think that it's going to help people learn the game just by how the social structure around the game works. But yeah, I, I do think people, casuals will have fun with it. I don't really think that Street Fighter VI is much more approachable in many ways also the fact that it just like looks more slower you know it looks slower stuff like that as long as the matchmaking is good it doesn't really matter as much how complex the game is as long as you can find people on your own level so i personally think that it will be fine for casuals but it's not a game that's aimed to be you know it's not aimed for people that are going to play it once and then drop it with how free to play models work what riot wants is that they want people that are diehards that log in they buy the season pass they buy the skins they buy the characters they watch tournaments if they can get those and get those people to pay long term that's going to be way more better for them right like they're going to wait way more money than like 200,000 500,000 you know a million people that all play but they don't like the game enough like they're very casual so they're not spending any they're not buying anything the free to play model really works in its favor here because it allows you to make a game that will be, be fun for a long time rather than it's instantly fun. If you have a game that's 60, $70 price tag when you buy it, the game has to be fun right away. If the game is not fun right away, you're just gonna refund it or you're not gonna buy it at all. So yeah, I'm, I'm very hyped about that. How strong is offense looking on day one? Offense is very strong, but it is not that strong mid screen. As soon as you learn how to do the retreating guard thing, um, it became pretty obvious that like offense is strong mid screen. Like you can still get hit. There's still mix ups, but 
it's very brief. Like you do a one, two, three, and then then someone is generally out. Um, unless you're taking big risks to continue your pressure. So like you're doing jab, jab, dash up, jab, jab, you know, to keep getting close to them. Uh, it's very dynamic. And I think the offense, mi offense strength is very, very good. Where if you get them in the corner, especially on knockdown, now sometimes you just have to block. And sometimes there will be those situations where you like block, you know, for 10 seconds straight, you block a bunch of mix-ups and it's super hype. That Goichi style moment, right? And I really think it has the best of both worlds where the average block string is not long, but sometimes you get them in the corner, you get the perfect situation, and you just like, they don't have burst, right? Like, and you just get to maul them. And I feel like that, like, dyna like how dynamic that is, that the average block string is not that long, but there are long block strings. The average combo is not that long, but if you're spending everything to kill someone, then it can be long. I think that's a very interesting and fun way to play fighting game where not every combo is kind of like this basic rhythm where like every combo is this long and then every block string is this long. Keeps it fresh. I only play the game on stick. Some people play it on pad. It does seem uh, good for both. Is Proctel going to be a W? So a lot of people ask me like, is the game actually good? Do people like it? So I like it, obviously. Um, but I think the best like vouch you can give for the game was that the first day we got there, uh, we got there at 9.30, we had to go up. Some people were jet lagged. Some people travel very far. And so we go in there, we have a you know walkthrough, presentation, and then we get to play the game, get lunch, we play more of the game, get more walkthrough. And then at 7 p.m. we eat. And then they're like, okay, you guys have to come back at nine tomorrow. And there's a shuttle leaving to the hotel, like a very nice hotel. You can either go there now or you can play until 11 p.m. where the riot office is close. I think out of like the 30, 40 people, everyone but I think two stayed and played until 11. Like, I think basically everyone really liked it. Obviously, it's not perfect this early, but the initial impressions were very strong. Uh, and people played all the, all the time day two as well. Like, the general response to everyone I talked about was like, oh my god. They got it. Like, they have it. They found like the. They finally found like a really good fighting game. Now they just have to finish developing this. In two v two, who decides to tie in? Um, the person that is controlling the main character is the one that decides when to swap full control to the other character. So there will be moments where you're like, "Hey, why do you tag me in right now?" But um, the player that isn't on the screen is the one that decides when to call the assist. So you have to kind of have like this handshake thing since generally when you tag to the other player, it's after they call the his assist. Um, so it's a little bit of both um, basically on who controls, but you are the one that decides when to swap full control. Chip kills are, were not in the game. Jump ins are strong, but answers are also strong. You do not get punished for blocking. Offense does feel balanced. So I already kind of went through offense there, but it feels very strong, but you definitely have chances to, you know, defend. And the offense is not very strong um, unless you're taking big risks if you're a solo character. Then it feels like dramatically, you know, less less strong since you don't have the assist to mix up with. One quick Twitch chat question. Spam your shit and I will, I will answer one question from chat. No, every character does not have an air dash. Um, Echo has a hop. Ari has a full on air dash plus a dive thing, uh, like air dash back and forth. Uh, Darius has no air movement in terms of like that, but he does have specials that change how he moves. Best guess at release date? Late 2024. Beta is what I would guess. Maybe 2025. It's gonna be a while, but I would like, there's so many fighting games, we'll survive. We'll survive. I would rather have it be done. So this is a really funny thing. What they said is that we want to make this game long term. We want to make this game, uh, you know, not just last a year. One of the big things they drove home was that they want this game to not go through this classic cycle that like Street Fighter V, Guilty Gear, Dragon Ball, all these games go through where like you, the game starts out and the game starts up a little rough. Not that many characters, right? And then it gets better and better and better. New new patches, new patches, new DLC, more characters, full roster, and then new generation, new fighting game comes out, 
you go back to 10, 16 characters. Game is raw, unbalanced again. Um, and you have to do this cycle. And then a lot of people, they don't like the new game. They don't want to swap. What they want is they want a game that lasts forever. That is like you know, intergenerational. I think that's very interesting where I really dislike the, f the thought of like, oh, if I like Strive, but there comes out a, a new game, like even if just Street Fighter or, you know, Tekken takes over it and it becomes small, then that's going to be a real bummer, right? Like you don't want to swap to new game because you might not want to play the new Street Fighter. You might want to play Guilty Gear. You might want to play it, you know, and I think that's very interesting. But what they said then was that like, so with the release that like, we know that it's taken a while, but if it's, this is a game that they're going to bet on long term, they're going to get it right eventually. They might not get it right year one. Um, but if, but they want this to be a game that you can play with your kids. And if you're going to play with your kids, does it really matter if it comes out, you know, this year or next year or the year after that? Like the most important thing is that it's going to last not that it's going to come out a specific date. But yeah, I, I think it would be insane if Proctel eventually ends up being like a 70 character game with like 30 fuses, right? That'd be f insane. Is the game more left, right, or high, low? Uh, Both. And strike throw. Depending on the character and situation, you can do all of them. Can you cross up in the corner? Yes. There are a bunch of moves that cross up in the corner. And you can cross up in the corner um, from... Like during combos like that, you can put them outside the corner so you get back cross up mix. Uh, not everything crosses up in the corner. Like if you just jump at them, you're not gonna cross up. But there are specific moves, and they're not super rare where you can cross up. Can you bait burst by blocking? Yes, it is hard to bait burst. So some of the things you have to do to bait burst sometimes is you do a combo. Uh, if you can jump cancel, you can obviously bait the combo a lot of time. But if you're not doing a jump cancelable combo, what some people were doing, the developers, was that they would hit you one, two, three, and then, oh, you're going to burst. Since I can't jump cancel combo, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call my assist, and then I'm going to tag to my assist, because as soon as you tag to your assist, you can block, and that lets you, you know, bait it. So this feels kind of similarly to how using red RC in Guilty Gear to spend a resource in order to beta burst. So it's not easy to beta burst. It's actually, you have to prepare, you have to realize it quickly. You have to tag your other character. If that doesn't happen, then use your assist for nothing. You might drop the combo, stuff like that. It felt very natural in that sense where like, it was the right amount of cost for a burst bait. Uh, Antis were reliable. Uh, they were a little bit strong, I think. Um, if they're this strong, I think there needs to be slightly more air movement. The ideal, obviously, is that, is that you use all of them. You use uh, air to airs, grounded anti airs, you know, low profile, with punishing, air throw, all of, all of them. And it, right now, it felt like you can kind of pick one anti air if you had a good one, um, which I hope is not the case long term. Like, I hope there's, you know, variance in how you anti air. How viable was charging a heavy into dash as pressure off heavy normals, for example? I think it was viable. The developers did it way more than any of us did, but it's kind of hard to know exactly how good it was. Were you able to parry assist? I think so, yes. Um, additionally, one of the things they weren't sure about was how they're going to deal with parrying projectiles. Right now, parrying projectiles is kind of similar to how parrying an attack was, and they think that they might change that game logic in the future. They might make it so that if you parry a projectile, it's not going to be the same as if you parry a, a normal. So that, for example, if you parry a projectile from very, very far, like someone's just zoning you, you could just like instantly parry them and get a full combo. How is health managed? Is it a fixed amount or defense multiplier? I don't know it, like if it's a defense modifier, but characters do have different health. And yeah, so there is there is difference in health. Uh, we don't know the exact amount, but yeah, Ari had way less health than Darius for sure. Um, obviously, there's also red health that you can recover by, you know, not being on the screen. So if you have a lot of red health, you have to tag out let the other characters do some work. Uh, and that's one of the things that you benefit by constantly swapping back and forth between your characters is that you micromanage that red health. How much of a disadvantage is playing 1v2 instead of 2v2? Uh, right now, it's completely fine. 1v1 being one player, honestly, felt stronger, but it's going to depend. 
if there's, for example, a very, very, very complex character, like let's say a character as complex as Sado in Guilty Gear, right? Then it might be better to have two different people. So, so two people can play super complex characters. Uh, but it's gonna, we're gonna have to see, but right now you definitely did not feel disadvantaged playing 1v2. What are some of the longest combos in the game? The longest combo was like 20 seconds maybe if you use like full combo great starter hard combo assist all of the resources uh and then you know super into super uh they're not very ex easy to execute if you want to do max combos uh especially towards the end of the combo they become quite hard uh but even in the beginning they can be very hard if you want the optimal confirm if you want to do the route that scales the combo the least there are definitely very hard combos in this game and one of the most interesting things about this game was that everyone had a different combo. Like the developers, even though they all play the same four characters, they all had different combos um, because there's so many different routes for each character. There's so many like combos like, oh, this one corner carries slightly more. This one is different Oki. This one is Oki, but slightly different. This one is better for spending meter. This one is better for this assist. This one's better for tag launcher. This one's better for air turret. Like there's so many different combos. There's a lot of freedom and a lot of player expression in you know, choosing the right combo. Uh, only chip damage from special moves, right? I think so. And then you have chip damage from everything if you're in bleed by Darius. It's an auto combo, uh, like PP tag and Luminar. And if so, you can turn off. Right now, there's no auto combo. You can't press like jab, 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 jab and get a combo. You have to do light, medium, heavy, sp launcher, light, medium, heavy uh, to do that. You didn't really explain burst and said burst meter that well. If at all, you kind of just went, oh, that's burst without any further context can I clarify so burst is just a combo break you can call in your teammate during any combo uh and then instantly interrupt it with this big explosion if your opponent blocks it then the attack is going to be like the tag attack is going to be interrupted and then you're going to be able to punish them for trying to burst but overall it's a combo break you can also tag to your teammate as after you've bursted um, burst meter currently recharges just over time and as you get hit. Uh, one of the things that I suggested was that you should have burst recover faster when you're low life. Um, I think that's a really good way to incentivize people to burst sometimes when they're down a lot in a round so that because you can get, get it back, you can extend the round, stuff like that. Um, right now, yeah, it kind of just worked like burst us, uh, where it just passively recharges as you play the game and then you get a combo break every now and then. It does also, um, you, you keep the meter state between rounds. So if you do burst at the very end of the round and end up losing, you'll go into the next round with no burst. I always felt like fighting is for my thing, but never got around playing it. If this launch is here, then this might just be the only game I play. But I wanted to ask, does everyone feel like there is visual clutter? Or is this just how games in this style is supposed to be? There is visual clutter, and I do think it's supposed to be kind of messy. Kind of how, you know, a Dota team fight or a league team fight is supposed to be messy, right? Like there's a lot of things happening. If I watch Dota, there's going to be a lot of things happening. I think that's kind of the visual appeal sometimes because you can swap between both characters. Sometimes during the messiest sequences, you ju you just scream out like, who are you? Which one? Which one are you? Like, where do I go? Like, where do I block? Uh, sometimes you will tag into an attack that you like and get hit in a stupid way. Like it is messy. It's fast. But I think that's what makes it very hype and interesting in a sense. As you play, even just the two days we played, you get more and more used to it quicker and quicker and quicker. So it's not something that's always going to feel super messy. Um, but it is part of the charm that there's a lot of things going on. There's a lot of characters on the screen sometimes when you have assists and so on. All right. I think that's it for this one. I'll do an analysis video as well. So stay tuned for that. And let me know if you have any final questions. Any thoughts on the game so far? Hope you're as excited for it as I am. I will be playing it as Evo as well. Um, and I'm going to be able to record some footage. So let me know what you want recorded. And I'll try to help you with that. I'm also going to do some character guides at that point. You know, explain a little bit more like that. But since I do have the opportunity to record then, I think it's better for me to wait until then rather than try to like piece together like, you know, the different moves piece by piece, um, you know, here. With just a couple of matches of footage. All right.